Okay, and it looks like we are live streaming on Facebook. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Phil Brown from International Teacher Development Institute. And I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined here by our special guest, Dorothy Zemak. And as he saw by uh, today, as many of you know already, we're having our Q&A with Dorothy about her upcoming course, which starts next month on self-publishing in ELT. So if you joined us here on Facebook today, uh, please say hi, let us know where you're from. And uh, you can also share anything else you'd like to. And then I will just briefly introduce Dorothy. Um, before doing that, I'll just give everyone an overview of what we're going to do today. Um, Dorothy's going to talk a little bit about her course and uh, talk about what kinds of projects are involved in self-publishing and what things you can do and um, we'll give you a chance to see some of the projects that have been done by past participants including Aziz who's kindly joined us today and then at the end after that we'll also open up the Zoom room and allow people from Facebook to join us here and be able to ask more freely as well if you don't want to use the chat um, you're welcome to come in as you wish okay so that's what we have today. Um, Dorothy, so you've been uh, in ELT teaching and uh, teach training and publishing this like 30 plus years now. So it's a whole career, fantastic. And uh, but today specifically we're focusing on self-publishing. So would you kindly like to tell us a little bit about your course? And I will share the course page so that people can see as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I came to self-publishing from traditional publishing. I've done skills books and course books with, I don't know, everybody. Like Nolan Pearson, Oxford, Cambridge, McGraw-Hill, various publishers. And when I learned how to self-publish, I began doing different kinds of books. I think for the past oh, 10 years or so, traditional publishing has been moving towards kind of large series and huge course books and whatnot. Mm. And they've left behind all those kind of perky one-off conversation topic books and specialty books that I used to teach out of in the 80s, which were good books and, and sold decently for a single book, but not as much as you know a mammoth course. So publishers are putting their investment where they get the best return, which makes sense. But that leaves a lot of teachers with, you know, a shorter but good idea nowhere to publish it and people who would want to teach from those books those materials aren't being put out there mm -hmm. so with self-publishing we can kind of fill that niche that big publishers aren't interested in and aren't going to pick up and then we can kind of complement that publishing scene mm -hmm. so i the course that i'm teaching we mostly focus on ebooks just because they're faster, faster to market, faster to write, faster to format, but also um, print on demand, paperback books. And so the example, the physical examples I have to show here, I mean, they're all paperbacks. So if I just look at my Kindle, the cover of it looks the same every time. But so we're, we kind of hit the ground running, which is why it says on the course sign up page that you should have a project already in mind and something written already. Could be, you know, one unit, six pages, a couple blog entries, something, because from the beginning, we look at how to format a document, how to get it from Microsoft Word into an EPUB file. And then we deal with how do you source and add images? Uh, how do you handle different formatting issues? Where do you sell? How do you sell? Should you sell? And you know, of, of the projects that past course participants have brought to work on, we've had mm. a number of people who've made you know, books that they sell on Amazon, iBooks, Google Play, but we've also had um, somebody did memoirs, some did a children's picture book that her daughter had done illustrations for, we had a cookbook. Uh, we had someone from a teacher's association interest section who wanted to take their kind of like user's manuals and bylaws and put them into an ebook to pass on to, to future people running the SIG. We had teachers creating materials just for their own class and not for sale. So there's a lot of 
a, a lot of possibility. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think one of the things that you highlighted was that, you know, this is not just about learning how to, it's actually doing and yes. working on projects yes. and so on. So just to, uh, sorry to interrupt you, they, um, we, we're getting some static off your mic still, unfortunately. Oh, is that my hair? Sorry, sometimes I shake my head and your hair goes wild and I'll try to stuff it down behind my jacket. Is that better? Uh, I believe so. Um, okay, until I shake my head again. If I shake my head, kind of. Yes, that works me, though. I'm... Yes. It's okay, not good. good. So... Yeah, sorry. sorry about the hair. It is what it is. So, um, one of. Oops, sorry. This is an example of one of the books that I self published with, with a friend. We were working on a, a MOOC course. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I actually got it down in the, in the bar there. And we had so many you know, international students who had never done an online course before and kind of didn't know how to best take part in an online course. Mm. And I kept looking for a website where I could say, just go here and read these rules. And we realized that one didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So we kind of looked at each other and said, okay, then, then we will make it exist. And so we took all the advice that we wanted students to have and put it in the book made it into an ebook, made it into a paperback, and now it exists. It's, it's, it's a small, cheap book. It's never going to earn anyone a ton of money, but we wanted it to exist so we could let those students who needed the book, <laughs> needed that information, so they had access to it. So I think that's, that's one really great reason to self-publish is because the materials you want or you want students to have access to simply don't exist yes um, uh, and yeah i think many teachers can relate to that problem of you know going to publish is even going to publish affairs and not quite yeah. finding a that book that fits their course and yeah. then thinking yeah. well do i create my own materials and so on and a lot of teachers actually already have created their own materials that they use in class but there's a point where maybe you don't want to keep photocopying and making paper copies that students don't keep together and students wish that they had a nice, neat book right. of your materials. And if you could make those quickly and cheaply and make them available to your own students, it is better than, than endless photocopies that get lost or discarded or dirty or something. Yes. Also, I think you can, you can move a lot faster by yourself than you mm -hmm. can with a large publisher. So mm -hmm. when the pandemic hit and everyone turned to Zoom, we came out with this because everybody needed to know now, because I, I looked at the books on Zoom that were available. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of them are targeting business people, but there wasn't something just for teachers. Mm. And also what, what Keith and I, the, the author of, of this book, and I saw that there was nothing for complete beginners, people who maybe weren't even online that much or didn't use email that much and suddenly like k-12 teachers and suddenly they're told you have to be on zoom and they're going on what it's like well <laughs> what if we did a book for teachers that started at the very beginning with tons of screenshots and so my author just took his own screenshots and he talked about i do this in class and here's why i do this in class and you know, that book sold like hotcakes because clearly people wanted it and, and needed it. But if I tried to do it with a major publisher, I mean, it would probably be coming out next year, mm. at which point the demand is gone. I am doing a teaching with Zoom too, with a different author for more advanced teachers now that we've all had a year of Zooming. But for that very first year, I, I think it was important to have a book out that helps people immediately <laughs> so yes absolutely so sometimes there's that real time factor that comes in yeah. and uh actually i went to a workshop quite a few years back at jow japan association of language teaching and specifically i was having that issue uh, and this is before i knew about your course and the yeah. teachers there were talking about their first steps into self-publishing and you know they were talking exactly about that they say you know we've got some lesson materials and you can't yeah. find a textbook. Why don't we turn this into our own textbook um, right. and have it right, for right. our students? I, I do a number of books from teachers who are teaching courses who've done very specific materials. And mm. so nothing is going to fit their own course as much as their own 
materials. So this is one for an online course of writing for social justice, um, kind of mostly workbook format. Um, there's some writing prompts, but for those students who want that all gathered in one place, it's nice if it's available and not just as a as a downloadable PDF. So I mean, all, all kinds of projects are together. I'm, I'm at the moment, uh, my, my, my mother passed away recently and my father has sent me a lot of kind of like a memoir stuff that she's written about mm. her, her experiences growing up in Hawaii during World War II and watching, she was an eyewitness to the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And so I said, yeah, dad, I can gather all that and I can make it into a book. And, you know, my dad's 90. And I said, would you, would you like me to make it into a large print book? Mm. <laughs> He's like, yes, please. <laughs> so that, you know, no, no, that's not gonna be of interest probably to anybody outside my own family. But for my, you know, the 15, 20 people in my family, you know, extended family, that would be hugely meaningful and, and special. So yes, that'd be lovely. Do, right. I, you know, I can't go to Pearson and say, hey, you want to publish my mom's memoir? <laughs> so like, no. But so you can, you can have a very specific personal purpose. And if you see a reason for a book to exist, you can, you can make that book happen. And I think that's pretty exciting. Brilliant. Um, can I just... And I'm going to share uh, some of the things that have been done in the past. Um, ah, not, okay. By not all, uh, yes, uh, not all of them, because uh, we've had um, about 100 participants take your course over the last four years. It's now in the fifth year. And so we can see we've got uh, just a couple. Um, this is one by Aziz Sorbai. Ah, this evening or yep. afternoon or morning, wherever you are. And Aziz, are you here with us? Yes, yes. Excellent. <laughs> and would you like to tell us a little bit about your project and kind of where you started um, at the beginning of the course and where you ended up? Uh, okay, so uh, the, uh, the course was uh, very... Uh, Incredible! Uh, it 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 actually helped me to uh, to continue my passion in writing because, uh, as you know, uh, I am uh, really uh, interested in writing, uh, especially about English and uh, about how to teach English and etc. So uh, when I when I started Dorothy's course, I uh, the uh, the motivation uh, was uh, maximized. Mm -hmm. So basically, the idea started because uh, of the, uh, the, the a lot of teachers, including myself, are complaining about uh, teaching uh, difficult grammar structures, and students keep making the same mistakes, and you know this and this uh, vicious uh, circle repeating itself. Mm. So, uh, so I, I, uh, I, I, I try to find a way to make the process of teaching grammar fun, entertaining. So I was thinking of, uh, you know, grammar games. Uh, so I try to share the two main grammar games uh, or language games that I, that, I, that I am using in my classroom uh, practice. I try to use uh, tic-tac-toe and uh, the word, word search. Mm. So we search uh, for, uh, you know, to teach regular and irregular verbs and tic-tac-toe to teach, to teach uh, the difference between adjectives, nouns, verbs, etc. Parts of speech in general. And, so uh, the, 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 the experience was, 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 was really great. Uh, uh, and uh, I am thinking of, uh, you know, I know that the book is not great, <laughs> but... Uh, uh, but it was an experience, and uh, I am counting on uh, teachers' feedback for a second uh, edition, maybe. Oh, you brilliant. Know, a second edition or a second book, right? Book yes. Two, right? Yes. That's, that's my future project. Fantastic. Um, what, um, at what point did you decide, yes, I want to kind of turn this into a book and self-publish? You know, I, I was dreaming to have a book of my own. Mm. You know that when you have a book of your own with your name, the title, you feel like uh, you are you are proud of something. Uh, so uh, this is a, a huge accomplishment uh, for me, actually. Uh, Absolutely. So my ideas, the the challenges that I face in the classroom, uh, I I I, 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 I turned them into a book. I shared my challenges, 
and how I uh, I deal with this problem of uh, of uh, of uh, teaching grammar. Okay. Mm. Fantastic. And I, I think that's that's you know a nice voice to have in published materials of people who are currently teachers and not people who you know haven't been in the classroom for some time. You know things change. Yes. Things change. People change, and so if we can get published materials from teachers who are currently teaching, you know, that's, that's a nice view. Those, those materials should exist. Definitely. Um, I'd just like to share, so this is one of the ones we shared more recently. Um, Dr. Mangai Wilson, she published this one on Zooming into Digital Education. Um, I can see, hi, uh, Mangai, you're with us on Facebook. And um, if you're able to join us in the room, then please do so, if not, um, then we'll just let Dorothy, to begin with, tell us a little bit. Um, do you remember about this project? Well, this this was one that came, I'm trying to think, was that, yeah, kind it's of. Last year, maybe? Right? Yeah, yeah, yes. this, this was last year. So another, you know, responding to the pandemic. And it, again, it's can you have something available for teachers now? And, you know, teachers didn't, you didn't have time to wait one or two years. And I don't think people, you know, classroom teachers coping with digital education want, you know, a $50 tome that starts with the history of online teaching from the 1970s. And they, they want, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what can I do next week? Because suddenly I'm locked out of my office and my, my students are online and here we are. So, you know, just that, that flexibility and, and the drive, can we, can we get something into teachers' hands now? It is really important, and, and I think if you, if you look on on stores like Amazon, those books that came out quickly with mm. Microsoft Teams or Zoom or digital education in general, most a lot of them are self published because yes. we just we just come out faster. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, we had a couple of others that were to show a kind of a range oh. of projects. <laughs> Remember this one with the it was done in Spanish and English, uh, and a lovely kind of storybook, right? By Laura yeah, I, I don't think I saw that that cover come out in class, but what a what a cute cover! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Laura. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And then um, ah, um, Marguerite, Marguerite. Yeah, she, she was really interested in you know kind of rescue animals and so on, right? So she created yeah, this. Yeah, and I, I think it was it was like her her children or certainly sort of like kids mm. she knew who did the the illustrations. I believe she went on and did a book too. I think there's there's more than one in the series now. Excellent. So I look forward to seeing those as well. And then uh, Vicky Salmel, she was, uh, this is kind of... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this this is another, Vicky was somebody who took blog posts she'd already written mm. and and collected them into a book, which I, I did with some, you know, old columns that I'd done for, for a TESOL magazine. But if, if you're a blogger, you know, you, you post something and even if you use tags, after a while, it kind of slips further and further into the archive and people don't see them anymore. Mm. And they don't want to go searching and hunting through your website, but you've got that stuff already written. So yes. if you want to collect it into a book, then it's you know, easily accessible. It doesn't have all the other things that get mixed into a blog, like your calendar and your upcoming announcements. It's just your your essays. And I know one thing I do with, with mine is I, I've made it into a paperback and I carry copies when I travel. If I'm doing a workshop at some institution, I leave a copy in the library or I give them out as raffle gifts at conferences or something. So it's a, a nice, it's nice to have your own physical book in hand that you can, can give people. Mm, not, not just to sell, but also to, to donate. Yeah. So I think, you know, Often people think about, okay, I've written a, a, like a formal book, or I've got a, an autobiography, or I've got lesson materials to put into a textbook, or I want to make a storybook. But yes, this one, turning blog articles, I think it's sometimes yeah. the things that people overlook the possibility of doing. So and that's already, really good to show. you've already done the work. <laughs> right. Right? So you might as well, you know, keep, keep that writing current and available. Brilliant. And then uh, Wilma Luth, uh, mm. she, she put this one out as well. Um, and reflective practice is always something that we value as teachers and interested in professional development. So yeah. this was excellent to see. And then um, that's the last one I have just to showcase today. Okay. All right. 
I'm trying to think of what came out of our of the course last year. We had one on um, teaching with escape rooms, mm -hmm. which I thought was a brilliant idea. And then somebody published, and I know this one's you know, available for sale on uh, using TED Talks to teach with. Okay, uh, so. I'm going to check over and scan into the Facebook chat. If you have any questions from the audience, then please, uh, you can either type them in the chat or you can join us in the Zoom room and we'll share a link there for you as we look together with the password. I think Bob's just going to share that with everybody there. And yes, there was a book on um, uh, teaching with TED Talks, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was interested actually, I was just speaking to a teacher here in Malaysia and she's interested in, um, in promoting teaching with TED Talks with schools here as, you you know, as a way to further engage students and do project-based learning and so forth. There, there's your book. I mean, that's, I, I, I wound up with, with that author um, who also works as an editor. After the course was over, he and I traded um, proofreading and mm -hmm. editing. I had him do some of my projects. I went through his. So I've read the TED book in, in detail because <laughs> mm. I, I went through it carefully and ah, it's great you know links to downloadable worksheets on his website and you know so even if you have the ebook you have access to, to photocopyable lesson plans and mm. all kinds of extra resources there's links to the youtube and the vimeo ted talks themselves and it's really nicely put together absolutely um the yeah and you know the the things that people can do now with ted and students can do with TED that's evolved over the last 10 years and the ways that they can search for videos and so on. I think yeah. back 10 years ago, people thought of, yeah, I watched a TED talk, they're great content, but they might be too hard for my students and so on. But yeah. um, being able to see and learn what another teacher's done and see what students can do in terms of looking for yeah. shorter videos or videos with captions and subtitles makes it that much more accessible. So. Uh, Think more and more teachers are becoming aware of that and of course supported with uh, ted ed yeah and just coming through um so we've got a question here from wayne malcolm who asks are there hot topics outside of online teaching that are on your radar on my radar hot topics um i i think any sort of single series skill books. I mean, if you've got, you know, a great way of teaching grammar or a great way of teaching vocabulary, something that's not part of kind of a massive course book empire. I think there are a lot of teachers who are looking for something that just fits their immediate need now. So I would say if there's something that you do as a teacher that works in the classroom, that's always going to be your best material rather than thinking, oh, well, you know, listening is popular. I should write a listening book. I mean, if you don't, have something to say about listening it's going to be it's going to be a harder slog but if you if you have a listening technique that you think is brilliant and you write that up there there will probably be interest yes so I, I would start first from what you know works well and what isn't out there already mm. and another nice thing about the self-publishing is because you know you're not supporting an office in london or new york is you can set your prices lower so i think you reach more, a lot of teachers buy their own materials, right? I mm. mean, some people have school budgets and their administrations will buy for them, but a lot of teachers buy their own professional development books, they buy their own classroom materials. So if you can keep costs down for teachers, that's, that's really important and, and costs down for students. And yet the percentage that you earn for copy on something you've self-published is a lot higher than what you would get on a commercially published textbook because they have all kinds of other expenses right. that come out of that. that yeah, I've, I've seen, for example, people sometimes they're selling like uh, eBooks for 99 cents on Amazon. And, um, but then they're selling a lot of copies and able to reach those teachers that wouldn't normally yeah. be able to afford yeah. them. So just as you're saying. Um, I've got a question here from um, Adam Cardos, who's, who was just asking, would you therefore say that the more specific, the better? Maybe <laughs> I mean, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to project exactly what somebody will buy. I mean, I've, I've done um, graded readers, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, in, in a series, I, this is an author who also does her own audio. So she's mm. got audio books out. Well, I have some, you know, um, 
on nonfiction graded readers. So I would call that pretty general. Mm. But programs that, that read graded readers, I mean, students go through them like potato chips, right? I mean, yes. can, so they'll read one and immediately they read another. And just because they've read a Macmillan book or a Penguin book doesn't mean they won't read your book. I mean, they just want a lot of content. Um, yes. I have, I have a series of just kind of sh quick, quick and accessible tips for teaching skills, teach speaking, listening, vocabulary, teenagers, young learners, the kind of the kind of tips that you would get in a teacher's book to a course book, except it's not tied to anything else. So you could call that general, but because I price them very, very low, these always sell well. I have I have some self-study ones for students, and those are in fact 99 cent books because they're they're small, they're cheap. Right. You know, so yeah, and I know, for example, um, I have a friend of mine and he wanted to have, you know, graded readers for his elementary school EFL students and mm -hmm. there wasn't, there just wasn't things that were easy enough for yeah. his students. So eventually he ended up writing his own materials. Exactly. And then yeah, like whatever, go, whatever you wish you could buy that isn't there. <laughs> right. that, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing to, to, to think, can you self-publish? And, you know, there's, there's certainly some limitations. I mean, if you don't have your own studio of actors who will do custom photo shoots for you or that you can do videos of, then it's, it's going to be hard to replicate a course book. Um, I think self-publishing is a lot easier with mostly text and the kind of images that you could get from stock photo sites. Mm. Whereas if you need very specifically drawn artwork and you yourself are not a professional artist, then you're going to need to commission and pay somebody to do that and, and those those costs can mount up i mean you know if you needed you know uh, an lms system with a video going that's when you'd want to turn to a traditional publisher because they have those resources and those systems set up right something for a graded reader is basically text with a couple of supporting images and yeah, and there are some freelance artists and graphic artists who also have worked with uh, people yeah. actually we know um, on yeah. their projects and so on and have done wonderful jobs. So I think there are networks that people can get in touch oh, yeah, with. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, we, and we have, you know, we have a space in our course for, you know, who does freelance proofreading and editing and cover design and things for, for self publishing ELT people if you want. Okay, you know, thank you. We'll hire uh, for that. Yes. Um, Moving on, we have a question from Adam Jenkins, who was wondering um, about getting self-published books into uh, bookstores with uh, like big bookstores in your own country, whether that's, for example, Kinokuniya in Japan or, you know. Um... Yeah, that, that's a harder sell. If you, mm -hmm. just because of the, the pricing model, most bookstores, and I, I'm less familiar with, with stores in Japan, but it's probably not that different. Um, bookstores that, that order paper books want a minimum of a 55% discount built into the price. So they're looking at publishers who do these enormous print runs and they want the books to be then returnable and to have this discount built in. So even though you're, if you're publishing your book on Amazon, your paperback price is going to be, you can set it lower than say a book from Oxford or Cengage or Pearson. If you wanted to get it into a bookstore and you had to then build a 55% discount on top of that, your price winds up very high. And most bookstores will only take, they'll only stock books if people keep asking for them. You, you get an ISBN, anybody could order for you. You could walk into a Kinokuniya and say, here's the ISBN, get me this book. But for them to give it shelf space, you're competing with with big publishers that have these deep discounts and loss leaders, and they don't mind if the, the, the hardbacks lose money because some paperbacks somewhere else are gonna support them. It's actually why traditionally published ebook prices are so high. If you've seen these kind of 12.99, 14.99 Kindle books, it's because they're subsidizing hardbacks that lose money for publishers. Mm. But the hardbacks take up the physical space in the bookstore and make a nice display. So um, when people ask, you know, where are your books available? I say you can get them on Book Depository with free worldwide shipping. You can order it from anywhere. Uh, I have some school systems now that contact me directly. They pay by PayPal. I ship them author copies at 
lower than the Amazon price, so I do some direct selling. Um, but the Amazon expanded distribution gets you into the Ingram catalog, and my books are all on Book Depository. So you can go in with an ISBN and order them. But are they just going to be stocked in Kino Kunia? So somebody wandering by says, Oh, that's a nice looking book. Honestly, chances are slim. Right. Unless, unless you're a good talker and you go into Kino Kunia and sell them hard. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for sharing and answering that. And um, I'll scan back to the chat in a moment before I do so. So basically just um, summarizing back some of the things that uh, projects that have kind of turned into self-publishing um, have been things like lesson materials, storybooks, uh, textbooks, uh, resource books, blogs, anything else I've missed? I think it was either last year or the year before we had um, a a foreign wives association of, of Japan that did a oh, yes. book and mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it wasn't strictly language teaching materials but it was a great looking book yeah yes and I remember um, someone last year she was an English teacher but she was also interested um, uh, in producing a maths textbook um, because ah, yeah. she was finding increased demand for maths where she was so she was teaching content based classes and so on yeah okay um so yeah if you're interested anyone in the chat feel free to add any last questions you can also share what kind of projects you might be interested in doing whether that's uh, one of the things mentioned or something that we've not thought of and if anyone if anyone wants to ask now is such and such a project possible i mean i do ask people to just describe in a few sentences if they apply for the course what their project is because mm -hmm. if something really isn't doable i I'd rather tell people in advance before they pay for a course, so nobody's going to be surprised. Yes, and so I think that's one of the important things that you've done since the beginning. It's a bit different to other courses, but you do kind of help screen uh, the viability of any projects. Right, just so people, you know, realistically know, is, is, is my idea something that I could do? And mm -hmm. if not, then maybe we can guide it or shape it or, or do something else. But, but once you learn the process on one project, you can take what you've learned and certainly apply it to other things in the future. I mean, you're, you're learning skills that hopefully you'll use. Yes, that's definitely good know-how. Um, and uh, Wayne Malcolm also asks, um, how do you feel, what do you think about dissertations um, being turned into books? Sometimes people want to publish their masters or doctorate. Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, I, I, I don't know that there's a huge demand for, for people looking for dissertations, but it depending on your topic, mm. right? If, if, there's, if there's, you know, 23 people in the world who, who wish they had access to your topic, but otherwise you'd be behind some university paywall or something, they might never find your research. So right. absolutely, if you can put it out there, you increase the chances that people who would want to know what you found out and what you discovered could actually access that information. Yeah, actually I bought someone else's uh, published dissertation uh, yeah. on vocabulary learning strategies when I was doing my masters and that was a topic I was interested in and you know somebody else had specifically done it so. Yeah, yeah, so I mean you, you kind of don't know what the demand is until you open up and, and see who's interested. That's true. Um, so just uh, I'd like to share also just the course page and uh, just give people an idea of how things are structured if they didn't know already but um, the details are here I should, we'll share this link as well in the chat but basically you have four live sessions starting from the 6th of June and running weekly they're an hour each and then what do what can participants kind of expect to be doing in the live sessions and in between oh. So for the live session, there's sort of a ton of information and I take you through it. We also do some live demos. I always do a book alongside the people in the course. So when it's time for me to publish mine, we, we kind of watch it go up on Amazon Live and up through the other channels so you can see exactly what it looks like. But I mean, of course we have people in time zones all over the world. So some people aren't watching it live, right? You get a recording. Mm. And, and I know even for those people who do attend the live sessions and watch it live, I know they, they watch the recordings again. There's, there's just a lot, 
there's a lot of information. So it's sometimes helpful to be able to watch something, pause the video, try it out on your document, go a little further, try it out on your document, go a little further. And, but you know, if you, if you can attend live, you can you know, ask questions from me in real time, but we always have, you know, a discussion forum where people can post covers in progress or post works in progress. We comment on, on each other's works. And so it's a nice way to, you know, bounce your project off other teachers and get some feedback and, Yes. And uh, Aziz, you know, as you were going through that process to do your your book, what do you remember about, you know, kind of the support and the experience you had in the community? One of the major, uh, maybe the difficult uh, uh, stages is the editing process. And uh, uh, I, 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 you know, I received a lot of support from Dorothy and uh, she, she also gave me uh, some uh, uh, contacts. Uh, her friend, I remember, uh, who is uh, doing the uh, the proofreading uh, and the editing. Uh, uh, you know, the editing the book and the especially uh, the uh, references and the yeah. things of that sort. But it was a, but it was a great experience. Yeah, I always love seeing what happens in the forums and you know the new uh, friendships and yeah. bonds that are made and just how much. Uh, people share and how generous people are with each other and uh, that really yeah. makes makes a lot of the course um, yeah that much more special a, a place to kind of get a soft landing for your your project before it goes out into the, the cold hard world you know you're you're there with your friends and someone can say mm, I, you know it's a handsome cover but it doesn't say you know teacher development to me at all so you know, as an author, you have one vision, but you're trying to reach people who aren't you. So you want to know if other people can look at your cover and see what your book's about and, and you know, that, that kind of thing. And it's, it's nice to try out, you know, is this image a good image? Or, or is this paragraph too wordy? And you have other people who can give you feedback and they're not paid customers who were expecting something different. It's people who are helping you and mm. helping you be successful. Yeah, and you know, it's, I think it's very, it's very rare when we, if we try and do something ourselves to be able to get that much feedback from other people on yeah. what my yeah. a good cover. And I remember people sharing covers around and, you know, do you like version A or version B and being able to have that pool of people who immediately yeah. respond and so on, that's yeah. invaluable. Right, so that's pretty much all we have time for, I think, for today. Um, I'm just gonna check if there's any last comments, but I think we've covered all the questions from the chat. Uh, thank you very, very much for, all your time and um, for joining us, uh, Dorothy yeah. and Aziz. Yeah, uh, we'll see your book too, Aziz. Right? Yes, yeah. uh, <laughs> indeed. So I am, I am, I am working on it. I, I uh, as I said before, uh, I think feedback uh, and reviews from teachers and uh, people uh, is uh, extremely important uh, for uh, the second edition because we, when we write, we write for ourselves, but when people read, we get uh, another perspective. Exactly, yeah. Absolutely. So if uh, everyone in the audience, if you're interested, then uh, please do check out the link to the course page. Uh, and remember that participants are limited on the course so that everyone gets a high quality experience with Dorothy. Okay, that's all we have for now. I'm Phil Brown from thank ITDI. Thank you, Dorothy, and thank you, Aziz. All right. Bye. Thank you, bye-bye.